Okay. Yeah. Are you recording? I am recording. Good. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, uh, just normally at this point we would be playing Forsaken Throne, not Forgotten Throne. I was about to say it. The city seems uh, a lot smaller. But what DDS do you mean, has we? you. We. I, I play with you in spirit. Don't worry. Uh, what's but, going on? but DDS has health issues, which is why I'm taking over Muhaha and stuff with a sort of replacement campaign sort of thing, something that we can play uh, should certain people just not appear or should campaigns break, basically as a, as a, yeah, a substitute so we still have our usual Pathfinder. And this particular campaign is going to be called the Dragon's Demand with our intrepid party of five people. Finally, we have all the three usual DMs combined as a player force that is to be reckoned with, I'm sure. What? And yeah, I think we should probably start off with just having you guys out of character, like explaining what kind of character you made and backstory and stuff, whatever you want to reveal. Because you in character you do know each other kind of, so it would be kind of awkward to just go, let me tell you about my life. So maybe just just say some things. And so, DDS will start. Okay. Because otherwise then. it will take forever for you we to decide. Should also I don't want to take the initiative, right? We now. should also note, by the way, before we start, that the Dragon's Demand is a pre pre published adventure. Uh, no spoilers. So no spoilers. Please. If there are any spoilers, oh, moderators will will bring down the ban hammer. So and, uh, and you know. just to warn you, I don't know what's going to happen because I haven't read it. So I'll assume whatever you say is a spoiler. Because <laughs> uh, I won't I, know. I haven't read it either, so, so please don't spoil it for you me. You haven't read it? What? What oh. am I supposed to? <laughs> oh, we, I think it was, uh, yeah. So let me just read up. <clears throat> Introduction: What you need to play. And, 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 and simple, we're, we're not talking about a simple bang hammer, we're talking about a big bang hammer. So don't even try it. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. I, 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 I will go first. Uh, I am cat playing uh, Fondra Canadrill, which is a female elf. Uh, you guys don't know too much about her past. Um, she's been traveling for quite a long time. Um, she doesn't... Whenever you try to, if you ever bring up her past, you tend to just kind of close up and not really want to speak very much. Um, something quite clearly haunting. <clears throat> but other than other than that, she's quite learned. Often spending a lot of time reading or mixing together some concoctions. <clears throat> um, and as a weapon, she has a very interesting weapon. It it, it is some it is a f early form of firearm. Shoot, you know, shooting, shooting metal pellets at uh, not the short, not the long, not the longest of distance, but definitely bypassing any armor something might have, making it rather annoying force to deal with. <clears throat> Other than that, uh, well, cast wise for anyone wanting to know, I'm right now the gunslinger. It will change, things will change over time. But I think that'll be all I'll say for now. Now I need to call. Uh, I'll go. Um, you know, I'm playing uh, Abarian Antares. He's, uh, well, class-wise, he's a hunter. Uh, also, by profession, he's a hunter. Um, you know, he is... This This is his hometown, you know. He, he grew up here, he, you know, protecting his, and feeding his family. Uh, but then he moved to the south for a while and you know now he decided he wants to visit his family again so the he, he joined the caravan uh, when it's up there and you know he took it all the way up for what I think it was like a couple months right that it took sheep something like that oh uh, yeah yeah and uh, weaponry wise it's kind of uncharacteristic for a hunter but I'm using a longsword and uh, a glaive guise arm which is like basically it's a sword on a stick um and you may think, huh, how does that work for a hunter? Well, he uh, has some spells, and he uses um, the spell Hide with Animals, so that animals have no idea he's there, and he just walks around and kills things as he walks past them. And it's really cheaty. 
but he's a good <laughs> hunter. Yeah. Manakai? Alright, fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah, uh, for this uh, little little thing, I'll be playing Elysia Ironstar, a dwarven monster hunter. Uh, she is from the uh, dwarven place with many kings in it. <laughs> I don't five, know how I many foul five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are five kings. Um, well, she well, she is part of the Ironstar clan, um, previously known as the Iron Hill clan. However, due to um, some embarrassing actions from their elders. At, uh, in the past, they lost the actual Iron Hills, and so they only have like uh, some dusty badlands left, where they they make a living, basically hunting for ivory and 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 scales and bones and such, and sell those. Not really very glorious. Um, in her youth, she was fed up with tales tales of old dwarven dwarvenhood and dwarven deeds, and so she traveled to the big city uh, with her with her pet purple worm hammer. To uh, to make it big and to serve the king, uh, she offered herself up, but um, was refused because really she had never really been in much of a battle, and so now she's out to uh, kill big things and bring their skulls back to prove that she's pretty awesome. Um, so stat wise, she is a uh, a lurching, uh, luring cavalier. Um, she uses primarily a um, composite short bow from atop her mount. And uh, if met in close combat, she'll have a dwarven long hammer and a dwarven war axe at her side. Yeah. Tina? <coughs> well, um, I'm playing Tiru Haitaka. Uh, she is a um, ranger cat folk. And to be honest, I haven't really been able to find a, uh, a story wise because I really don't know but I have so, a... So what you're saying is she is very mysterious. She's very mysterious. She, she might have amnesia. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> she, she doesn't have a very good... Um... Perhaps her main motivation is to find her own past. <laughs> yeah, let's say that. Jonas? Well, <clears throat> and for for this adventure, I will be uh, playing the role of Eladar Duran, a um, drow paladin. Yes, uh, not the most obvious fit you you would think, um, but uh, Eladar is uh, you know he was the third son of a minor noble house that he sort of fell out with, and had to escape. He didn't really agree with a lot of the things he saw there, and he had to escape to the surface. And he has subsided up here uh, for for uh, quite a few years now. And during his sort of early years uh, up here, he ran into both like kindness in the form of a local village he helped out, and evil in the form of a rampaging band of brigands that he uh, devoted all of his life to uh, to take down. And in the process of doing so, he found out that uh, that he had eyes upon him, basically. Someone up in heaven uh, looked down on his struggle and blessed him with powers. And so now, you know, in, in search for redemption, both for others and himself, all the wickedness he did commit in his early life, he now travels the land as a paladin of Sarenrae, the dawn flower. Uh, goddess of mercy, redemption, uh, and in some cases also retribution. He is a stalwart defender of the weak, and he is uh, trying to be quite the nice guy. He knows that he has a lot of racial prejudice against him that he does his best to make up for. He is usually clad in a uh, shining uh, full plate of his own design. Uh, there it's, it certainly has drow aesthetics to it. Um, very flowy, very like um, uh, slender uh, build of the plate. Don't want it spikes. Uh, it he has he has he doesn't have like the demon leering demon faces and stuff of normal drow armor perhaps, but more um, insignias of siren. Leering wing. angel faces. No, more like uh, angel wings and uh, sunbursts and things like that. On on the chest uh, of the chest plate is a sunburst of siren inlaid. He also wears the uh, the traditional blue. 
uh, coat uh, over his plate mail of the Serenray Faith, and he has a red sash uh, around his around his waist, sort of holding the coat in place. Um, he uh, he is kind of curious for a drow. His eyes, particularly, are not red as the normal drow, but uh, actually blue, and it doesn't seem to have uh, to to be that um, bothered by being out in the sunlight. Quite the opposite, actually. It is as if the sun goddess actually indeed smiles upon him and uh, helps him. Well then, and you have currently. You are currently in Belheim, which is a very quaint little town. Limestone buildings, paved roads, which may indicate that it was somewhat prosperous in the past, but it quite obviously is not anymore. There's not many people around. It looks slightly more dilapidated than perhaps it has in the past. Uh, you've arrived in Belheim, Belheim earlier that day, around noon. Uh, Silas Grip, your employer and owner of the caravan you were hired to guard, had intended it to be just a short stop to buy, buy some extra rations, feed for the horses and all that what you need. But things didn't quite turn out to be so simple for him, since he happened to meet the local sheriff, a burly man by the name of Sir Pell Ben Hovey. Whether the sheriff had a hunch or simply decided that he disliked Grip, he ordered the caravan to be searched by a few deputies, who ended up finding quite a few questionable contents, to say the least. Silas Grip was not very graceful in his defeat, from swearing that he didn't know that the things he was quite obviously smuggling w were illegal, to accusing every single one of his guards, meaning you, of having set him up. It took him quite a while to, co to finally confess everything followed by pleas to simply let him go and turn, turn the other way and just look away, basically. Ben Hovey agreed that, why, yes, he would let him go, and he would come with him back to where he came from, to Casimir to have the local authorities deal with him there. So there you were, stuck with no pay, no job, and no idea what to do. But luckily for you, a woman by the name of Talia Oram has approached you, offering you a day of free food and some simple rooms in her inn, the wise, the wise Piper Inn. Leaving you absolutely no chance to really say no to it, she apologized for the bad reception that Belham has given you before hurrying back to her inn, not wanting to leave things unsupervised for too long. Well, still no pay and no job, at least you have a place to stay at until you decide what to do. And that is where we will we'll go to first, since you would currently be in the inn with my very pretty picture in the huge inn and the fog of war broke again Just yeah i like don't, don't mind that oh gosh Good job. <laughs> that's, Good job. that's not supposed to i find it amusing how it looks like we can stand on top of the counter this, this is uh, the biggest pictures ever it is i think jake's token broke it one second my token yeah man they need they need to be sped set up in a special mm. way someone's playing the blame game oh, no. is it manakai possibly I don't know. Whatever. That, that's good. So, yeah, the, the, the pictures are kind of big, but they are, they are not supposed to be... <laughs> it's true sitting on a cat and sitting on a saucer. You can, you can shrink yes. them, you know that, right? <laughs> I, I could, but I figured more space would be good. Uh -huh. so, yeah. my, my character doesn't have sight. So. Oh my god, look at that little barrel! Does the hammer have sight? <laughs> let, let, let me... Yeah, no. Uh, wait, Tina's I, token. I, and there we go. I, yep, I, yep. I, Vision has been destroyed! We're blind! There you go. Perfect. I, there we go. Look at that tiny uh, barrel! <laughs> that is a very tiny barrel. The, the inn is normal like size. The barrel that you can see on a St. Bernard filled with brandy. The people are just very small. No, mm. never mind. Uh, the White Piper <laughs> Inn is a small, cozy, and well-maintained inn. A small fire is burning in the half, and judging by the smells from the kitchen, the evening meal is currently being prepared. There's a couple other patrons in the inn talking quietly, occasionally throwing very suspicious, suspicious glances your way, but not really doing more than just talking between each other. Hey! <laughs> do, do you want to... Are, are you sitting like at one table, or are you just spreading around the inn, or what are you doing? Well, if there's one table free, I mean, Alicia will sort of walk with the rest. Not really... You know, basically seeing what they do. She she's not she doesn't really she doesn't really feel great right now. 
her employer just sort of tried to sell her out for some things she didn't do. That's not really very cool of him. How, how confused. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, a, that's, a, that's a couple of free tables. It's just early evening. The working folk don't really come here quite yet. They will probably arrive soon. But so far, it's pretty empty apart from the usual suspects that are just always here, you think. Yeah, for now, Farner Fa will go, go over to this exact seat next to the fire and sit down and p pull, out, pull out a small book and start reading. Does, uh, does, um, does Farnra usually, usually sort of stay by herself? She, 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 oh, she often remains alone. She won't, she won't stop you if you want to you know, sit near her and have a conversation, but she's, she's, she's clearly very cautious around people. Well, at least able to stay, stay, uh, stay by Eladar, whom, whom she has uh, you know, known for a little longer than the rest. Yeah, well, Eladar will sit down at one of the tables and basically unsling his uh, his many weapons and like you know stack them against the wall behind him. Uh, the drow, the drow throwing weapons around. No, he's just carefully putting them down, not wanting to really alarm anyone. And looking around, he looks he looks a bit troubled, a little bit tired. And um, he, if if the barmaid offered or the barkeep offered any food, he will. Uh, graciously, you know, take some of it and eat a little bit and sort of look around and sort of frown to himself as he, as he sighs and, and looks to the rest of the party and says, well, that uh, that didn't go... It was a surprise, I must say. Didn't think he would have such a thing in him. I had, uh, I had uh, the slight suspicion that the man certainly liked his money, but... He had been honest with us up until then, I, I, I felt, at least. Hm. Shakes his head. So the real question is, what do we do now? Yes, well, that is the question, isn't it? He looks around. I must say I haven't been in this part of the country much before. Any of, any of you? Or at least he shakes her head. Tiberian smiles and says, "Grew up in this very town." Oh, interesting. Then perhaps, uh, my friend, you can uh, you can tell us a little bit about the place. You haven't said much on the way here. Sheep. <laughs> I don't know well, anything about this place. You know, Belheim is just a quiet town, really. There's not much ever since the old limestone quarry was flooded. There's not really been too much action here. Not really that much to do unless you like farming and craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. But at this point, nearby? it's in the middle of a giant forest. Oh, good. Yeah. But um, at this point, a very familiar looking woman would approach the innkeeper, who, has also, who was also the one who offered you free food, free board, apologized profoundly for your bad experiences. She is currently hurrying to your table, carrying a platter of bread, cheese, meat, some drinks in the other hand, and she puts them on the table and says, I'm so sorry about what happened to you, but there are worse places to be stuck in for a while. Some would call Badheim boring, but I would call it serene, I think. Everyone's complaining about times being hard, but the town's doing quite well for itself, I think. And the sheriff. It does seem a bit excessive for him to escort the entire caravan back to Casimir. That's hundreds of miles away, uh, away, is it not? Eladar nods solemnly and says, Yes, it is quite far away. He looks down at the food and says, You bring us quite the amount of food, my, my dear lady. Are you absolutely certain we, we don't have to pay? He sort of starts fishing for his coin pouch. Tidor is well, her face. <laughs> I want also, to make your stay as... Hmm? Sorry? It, I was going to say, it's okay if you don't have anyone recognize me, because it's been years since I've been here. Just so you don't have to have any extra, extra work. We, we'll go with that. Well, I want to make your stay as pleasant as possible. There's not many travelers coming to Belheim, and you're kind of the most exciting thing that happened here in a while, I have to admit. But don't worry about it. If you, you know, if you want to pay, you can, but I would rather not... Uh, Eleanor nods then, as you wish then, my lady. Thank you. All right. Oh, 
But what but, what is it you plan to do now? Do you just want to relax for a day, maybe? Just do nothing, perhaps? Sometimes just doing nothing really helps, I found. Adlero takes a bit of food and shoes and looks uh, looks at her and says, uh, I am not sure, dear lady, what uh, what what is there to do around here? At this at this exact moment, you hear a massive ruckus outside. Well, it sounds a bit like 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 thunder, but the weather was clear and there was really no storm in sight, so it's somewhat odd. Can you make me a knowledge engineering check? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, Fauna being apparently taught in such things would say that's no thunder that sounded like a building that just collapsed. And in fact, the other patrons in the bar seem to agree. Some of them walking outside, just looking around. And run outside. You run outside. Good. Well, seeing uh, Fonra taken off outside, Alarar will get up, gather his weapons, and head out after. Alicia looks pale, uh, slightly. She grabs her bow and, and with sort of a foreboding look in her eyes, hurries outside. Yeah, yeah. Very not his again, not again, not again, not again. Stuff. Tilo looks long at the food and goes, "Oh, what with the others?" Yeah, Talia was about to run out of sight as well, but she would rather not because it's her inn and those patrons always make trouble. So she's going to just look towards the door, just wanting to know what's happening. And you guys running outside, I'll put you to the other map. Uh, notice the following. Uh, outside, a short way away from the inn, not really that far, just around the corner, basically, you easily find the scene of the collapse. On a small rise, an old, stone, uh, an old stone tower has collapsed into a heap of rubble. The noise has already attracted quite a few bored onlookers. And in the debris, you see two people, a man and a woman looking around, seemingly, seemingly trying to find out what happened but they don't really seem to know what to look for. Instead, they just alternate between scratching their heads and kicking at a rock or two. And I shall put their tokens on the next one. These two friendly looking folk <laughs> are digging around in the debris. Well, they, look, that... they look familiar to me. <laughs> this uh, seems a bit, 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 you know, actually relaxed as she sees that it was indeed not Hammer who'd done something. As she, as she sort of gently lets out a, uh, a sort of sh a sharp, sharp call uh, for him. Not one of him to may run around by himself when there's, uh, you know, something going on. The, the few uh, inhabitants of the town who see him up would gasp slightly, probably. But the tower, that's really interesting to them, to them even more so than a giant purple worm. There are some murmurs going through the crowd. They keep mentioning some sort of wizard, apparently, and how obvious it is that he was definitely involved in this, followed by just general agreement by everyone else. Uh, one of the... Actually, make me a perception check. Let's go with that. Sure. Well, everyone except... Elysia and Firu would notice that... Firu! Oh, yeah, I can't really say that. That's difficult. Firu! That's it's because know. of the inner... Oh, in his voice, Tina. Would notice that and apparently the two helpless-looking, probably replacement deputies have found a body of sorts of a small creature. Probably a kobold. Which, again, as some of the oh. people in the crowd notice it, causes more murmurs and more, well, that is obvious that kobolds have something to do with it. Uh, eventually, someone suggests that someone should probably go to the wizard's door, see what he's up to. Someone else says that it's clearly a job for the deputy, because nobody in the crowd actually wants to go to that scary guy. And... Sin, yeah, sin, since that's what deputies are there for. The deputies digging through the rubble agree, but the question of which one of the two deputies actually goes over and knocks takes quite a while to solve. They are basically going back and forth. You should go. No, you should go. No, you should go. 
Eventually, the woman exclaims that she'll do it, stomping over to the nearby mansion, closely being followed by her partner. She frowns at another small body there. You can still see whatever's going on from where you're standing right now. It seems to be a charred cobalt corpse in front of the supposed wizard mansion. Uh, she knocks, wanting to ask him what the hell is going on, because this is strange, but nothing really happens. She reaches for the door handle, but is immediately stopped by her partner, who points at the charred cobalt corpse, and they end up arguing some more, saying perhaps he's busy and does not want to be disturbed. We shouldn't knock. It's, it's not really priority right now. We, there's no need to be on fire right now. Honor and they both agree. Honor would have approached the base of the town. No need to be on fire. Honor, yeah. as, quick as, as quick as possible. With five times move speed, we've got up there and chipped at the bottom of the tower. Yeah. yeah, approaching the tower, you see a lot of rubble. You seem to count two cobalt corpses who seem to just be completely crushed by the tower's collapse. And not any, much else. Can I see any clues that might explain why it collapsed exactly? Uh, not exactly. You do see that some of the ground floor has not completely collapsed. Uh, but it's very ruined. Did you and, say what? Yeah? Did you say what building it is? It, well, fr uh, from the murmurs in the crowd, you have heard words such as the witch tower. So you aren't really sure what this was. It was some sort of tower. But it looks kind of odd. Like there's an adjacent ruin that has been ruined for quite a while, but not directly related to the collapse. So maybe it was some sort of building. Maybe it was the witch. Do, what, what was it? Do I, I probably know. Uh, you would know this building to be the former castle of Belheim that was abandoned for quite a while. The uh, One of the towers of the castle survived the intentional collapse of the rest and was thereafter just uh, superstitiously referred to as the Witch Tower. Some people just started calling it that, and that stuck. Uh, shortly yeah, after... Yeah. A Baron will kind of like lean over and explain this to the rest of them. Yeah. Shortly after you hear the, uh, the sound of what must be hoofs on the paved road approach, as what surely is the Baroness of this town arrives with her singular escort, uh, the man that is escorting her jumps off his quad, uh, his quad, his horse, quite gracefully, then moves to help the Baroness. The Baroness just looks around the site, frowning at everything. She doesn't really seem very surprised, just sad, really, and, oh, does, it, does, it, does this have to happen to me, and now this is just a bad time? And, yeah, sh her frown definitely deep in seeing the two deputies just bumbling about, not really doing anything. But then he's, then she spots you, by far the most capable looking people in this group of farmers, workmen, and, well, replacement deputies. And she stomps towards you. Fun. Honor is still looking at the um, ruins have, of the tower. We have an angry baroness incoming. <laughs> This seems familiar. Please, <laughs> here tries to look as innocent as possible. Um, Fauna is not paying attention. Fauna right now is trying to like analyze the building. Uh, Tira was looking at flowers because she rolled look one. <laughs> Ooh, flowers. Well, she stomps towards you, pointing with an index finger. You are the Karen's guards, are you not? Despite losing your job and all that, I think today's your lucky day. Mull and Hot here. She points to the two deputies. They can't handle this without the sheriff to hold their hands, and I want to know what happened here. You seem to be a capable bunch. If you go in there and look through the rubble, find out what happened and why there are kobolds in my town, I'll pay the lot of you 500 gold pieces. While you're, you're looking around in the ruins, keep an eye out for any signs of our local eccentric, Hunkley. It seems somewhat suspicious to me that he's not answering his door. Let me know what you find. The, the, uh, Eladar blinks in surprise, mumbling to himself, well, that was curt. And then he spreads his hands and says, uh, uh, My Lady Baroness, uh, if this is your, uh, your wish, 
I am sure me and my friends can help out. He sort of looks behind himself to the rest of the party. The Baron just kind of scratches his head. Not, not, you know. not, not, not. <laughs> Good, okay. well then, get moving. Uh, I see. As she, she points to the remains of the ground floor of the tower. Yep. Uh, something Bonner would have wanted to do with the ground floor of the tower before too much time passes. Um, detect magic. Is there an aura of anything being cast here recently? No. Well, there goes that spell ability. <laughs> yeah, the the collapse has just happened like five to ten minutes ago. Any sign of what might have caused it will still be there. You can see that the ground floor is still standing. Uh, there's that's probably a basement of sorts. There's like a sinkhole that appeared. It might be worth checking out. Oh, a sinkhole. If one respects this next be a basement, she's going to try finding a basement. Well, what you see is... Uh, I don't have a picture for that. But what you see is a part of the tower that looks somewhat sturdy. Uh, on top of it, you suspect that there's a hatch. But getting up there might be slightly difficult. Oh, there's no. two... There's two methods that you can use. You can either try to scale up the debris and rubble, or try to climb one of these still standing walls. Browns both. Tira looks excited. She wants to climb. Oh, that's, that's a good point. Tiro! Tira, I'll climb! You can I, go I, I climb point, up there. I'd point my, I want Tiro want to Eleanor waves uh, a barrier over. Mm hmm, yeah. Uh, my friend, uh, Cobalt's in the town, as it looks at the body. Is there a lot of cobalt in the forest around here? Uh, I mean, cheap. I mean, I would assume it's kind of uncharacteristic for them to be showing up around here, but I imagine that, you know, every forest has a cobalt band, right? So... There are certainly some cobalts in the forest that you know of, but they don't usually make any trouble whatsoever, so this is kind of strange. Yeah. Burian will, will uh, say, well, I mean, as long as I've lived here, there's been the odd kobold around in the forest, but they almost always stay away from the town, so this is rather odd. I see. Look, did, did the Baroness stomp off again? No, she's still expectantly standing you, waiting for you to move. And she's <laughs> getting <laughs> rather impatient. Oh, well, Nizia will, will guide Hammer to move towards the tower. Well, we've already seen two of them at the tower. Well, Tiro already climbed. She rolled a 25. Yeah, you climb up that wall, no problem. I mean, she has, she, she's got a climb speed, and you expect her to. Yeah. And you, well, you she, yeah, she's got a climb speed. She doesn't even need to make a check. She just does it. Yeah. I wanted to show off. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. We all do, right? And you do see that there is indeed a hatch that might allow you access to the basement. Ooh. Uh, she will look down the... It's a cold where you stand. Like down the edge. Or She's looking down the edge and goes, There's the hatchet! A, a hatch, not a hatchet. Hatch, sorry. A hatchet is like an axe. Yeah. I know. I am... yeah. I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad I was correct. Well, yeah, you probably spent some time before climbing up there to actually find out any clues, like just in the rubble, but you don't really find anything whatsoever. I found a hatch. That... It's a good start. There's a hatch. Yeah, How do we Iberian get in without climbing? Iberian would know that this tower, while oh, old, oh. was very sturdy and shouldn't just collapse randomly. There was no earthquake like the one that flooded the limestone quarry that he would have mm. noticed that. But right. Is there uh, something Tiro can um, tie a rope to? You can certainly find something to tie a rope to. Because she totally has a rope. In that case. That will make the climb easier but not trivial. I want to take, I want to take ten. Oh wow, that was a terrible climb check. Keep oh right, because I forgot armor check penalty was a thing. Keep, you know, keep, this, this, this I'm, I'm not gonna path. like try to climb up. I'm yep. just gonna like test my, you know, go go up and see. Okay, if please, I, please tell me when you actually try climbing up. So yeah. the hatch is in the ceiling of what exactly? It is in the ceiling of the still standing remains of what appears to be part of the first floor. The rest is ruined. Okay. So the hatch would lead up to something. Something. The hatch goes down. 
the hatch goes down. Oh, to a basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to a, a basement. basement. So we need to climb up the rubble to get and into the basement. Down it and then in, yeah. Okay. The, the, the tower's main door does seem to be accessible, but it's blocked from the inside. It's impossible to open. Mm -hmm. Terry, is the hatch locked? It is not locked. No. Elidor looks at their rope and says, "I, uh, I am afraid that I am somewhat uh, sort of motions towards the armor. It is quite heavy." Elysia looks to the townspeople and says, "Someone fetch a step. Someone fetch a ladder." <laughs> Can Tidu uh, clear the doorway? Uh, no. It would take a long while. Some of those rocks are really big. You are unsure if you can even lift them. Oh. And as what's your character's name? I should know this. I'm the DM. Uh, as Elysia shouts for the townsfolk to get a ladder, none of them really move until what appears to be a very odd-looking woman just goes ah and stomps off, supposedly to probably fulfill your request. Being uh, frustrated at the other townsfolk just wanting to stand there and stare. In the meantime, Tiru will look down and say, Sorry, I can't move the stones. They're too heavy. And I'm sorry, I don't have anything better than a robe. It, it's, fine. it's fine. Uh, I'm sure some of the good townsfolk will uh, <laughs> procure a ladder for us. So wait, what's wait, down wait. there? I don't know. Take a look, if you can. Okay. okay. No reason just climbing up there if there's nothing in there. Uh, Tiru will take a look. Old man, take a look. Uh, do you have dark vision? Yes. No, I have low light vision, doesn't I? Do not allow? With low light vision, you would see that uh, the first, the part of the first floor that you're currently on top of, there's not really much there, but there's another hatch in the uh, floor down that seems to lead to a basement, but it is blocked by a beam of wood that fell on top on top of that hatch. Okay, so come back. Behind the hatch is another hatch, but it's blocked. Uh, eventually, uh, the, the woman who stormed off returns with a large ladder. Uh, she will approach uh, Elysia, hand her the ladder, just thrust it into her arms, and say, Here you go. Sorry for the others to be so dumb. I'm Caladestina, the local undertaker. Oh, yeah. Wonder why she would have a gra uh, a ladder. She puts yeah. things down, not up. Elysia uh, <laughs> sort of moves a hand to shake her hand. Yeah. She will shake your hand with handshake. a very firm handshake. She looks like a man. She'll she'll give her a very firm handshake. <laughs> that description. Uh, what's she wearing? She is. <laughs> she is wearing very practical clothing. Leather, leather like a, not a harness. That would be weird. Like a leather vest with an apron underneath. Right, well, she say, I like your boots. wet. I like your vest. Before taking the ladder and then putting it up too. She she like blinks. Frowns. <laughs> Must be good at parties. And then let's have let's spend any of them an extreme armor check penalty. We're talking like. Minus five or minus six or more, which we have to take ten climb a ladder. Yeah, I'm putting the ladder against the wall that probably works. The DC five at that point, I think. The, the Baroness is still watching you. <laughs> frown, the frown deepening as she's apparently trying to decide if you are indeed more capable than her deputies. As you seem unable to simply navigate through this seemingly trivial obstacle. Well. We, we, one of us has. Climbs the ladder. Yeah. Sure. We climb the ladder. Going down the first hatch is no problem. It's open. It's not hard to climb down. Mm -hmm. Up might not be that difficult either. There's still some piece of ladder left that should be enough to get you out again. You do see that uh, on the hatch that seems to lead to the basement seems to be a large wooden beam. It's not huge and someone <laughs> with average strength and some... Uh, yeah, someone with average average strength should be able to lift it, no problem. Okay, I do that. You do that. Yeah. You move the beam, and the entire building doesn't collapse. Good. Which is very good. 
Uh, looking down the now unblocked hatch, you see absolutely nothing. It's completely dark. But it doesn't seem to be collapsed. It seems to be accessible and may provide clues to why the tower collapsed. Tiru pulls out a, a torch. Lisa, yeah. you can see in the dark. Yeah. Can you have a look down? I'll look down. You see a room. There's some rubble just <clears throat> on the floor. The collapse seems to have not completely left this room intact, but it seems to be stable enough to access. Can't really tell that much more from just looking down the hatch. Well, there's like, is there a stairway? Uh, there is a sort of stairway. It, it's kind of awkward to navigate. It's very narrow, but it seems still sturdy enough. Oh, that's fine. So yeah, I'll go down and take a look. She'll walk down. Mm. Good. So we'll follow behind her with a torch. I will move you to a new map if I can figure out how to do that. Time to shrink ourselves. Uh, well, first of all, let me just give me a second here to figure out how I reveal this and stuff. Yeah. Purple worm, shrink yourself as well. No. No. Because right now that purple worm. Oh, right click, sorry. Uh, so we're just going down in with this dark tunnel then. We have a torch. Yeah. I got a torch. Well, I have a, the a way. I don't see in the dark by default, but I have a way of doing that. It's your choice if you want to turn it on. I'll see that I, I don't want to yet, no. And if they're like color coded parcels, I can't do that, but. Dum -dum -dum, revealing one second. I'll be right back. Aha. Copy. Let me double check. Yeah, copy your tokens and. Um, I will copy time since you just left. I will. I just need to double check that you don't see anything you're not supposed to see. Can, you, you, can, you, can someone make uh, Jonas medium? That would have to be a sheep because we don't have access. Yep. I don't see anything right now. You don't see anything. I should oh, have revealed something. You know, I mean, no, you know if you want to see something, you can just tag on show as player. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, the point is we need to be, the point is we need to be centered because um, we, oh, we spawn uh, in the top left. I found it, but, you know. Oh. I assume here's where we came down with it? Or? You came down yep. right here. Okay. The hatch is like above here. There's like a small wooden ladder that miraculously has survived. Well, yeah, you'll have to go get Patch Jonas for us. I make him crack size. Yeah, I don't have ownership over him or else I would have made no him one does. size. I just oh. made him correct size. Okay, cool. I'll copy him. We, we, have, very little in the way of we have very little in the way of shared ownership. Where did he go? There he is. He's big enough. Are these beds? One second. Okay. Two people are AFK, but I'm just going to... I what are you saying? <laughs> okay. your, your, your two people AFK seem to have just broke. Uh, well, this is some basement. That is some basement. You're some basement. <laughs> yeah, the walls of.